Yo, 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 school in the building, what's happening in? Yo, back again with another episode of School's Guilty Pleasures. I'm here with my dog, my right-hand man, the guy, Rich. <laughs> what's happening with your brother? How you feeling? Oh, man, no complaints, man. Happy New Year, all that good shit, brother. Happy New Year to you, man. Um, yes, yes. How's it, feel to be, how's it feel to be the first release? In 2024 under the culture garden umbrella it feels good it feel? man it, it's actually been a special it's been a special type of month for me on that because uh as you know i was on another week in the books with spike and mo so i i kicked off that year as well so i'm i'm, I'm feeling good about that I, I didn't even think about that yeah you were the first yeah. episode for them and for this yeah so shout yeah. out to you getting things off to the right foot man yeah, man i'm trying um, <laughs> yeah 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 uh, for those that don't know another week in the books um, incredible podcast, man. Pretty incredible okay. podcast hosted by uh, Maurice Hunt and Spike Lou. Uh, my co-host, Good Earners, Sopranos podcast. Yeah, uh, with them and that, but but another week in the books is just one of those ones. It's an incredible conversation. Um, Two thirds of the Culture Garden family have been on there, Rachel and myself, and, and I'm glad we got to round out the trifecta. Uh, I'll make sure I put your episode school in the description of this episode. Okay. So for anybody out there want to check it out, um, you can click on the link right in the episode description and, and check out check that out. But um, I'm gonna let you get back to it, man. I just just real quick, everyone. I'm I'm here to uh, no pun intended. I'm here to set the table for my brother. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be talking about the food industry and things like that. But yes. I just uh, I'm just here to kind of. I know you'll get into a school, but school mm -hmm. has so much history in the restaurant business. Yes. Um, that I wanted to hear him. You know, this was his idea, but instead of me talking about what I like about the movie, um, just kind of really set it up for you to share your experiences, your stories, and how accurate some of this stuff is. Um, yeah. For better or for worse, the whole night. Uh, but yeah, man, looking forward to just sitting in on this one with you. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I appreciate you. No doubt. So um, if you can't tell RC by now, the movie we're talking about is Waiting. Um, this is a comedy. It's an older comedy. It's a 2005 comedy. So it, it it's cringy a little bit, but it's still funny nonetheless. Um, first uh, uh, debuted or came out in movie theaters October 7th, of 2005, um, with a budget of $3 million, made about 16 mil. So it did its thing, did enough. Um, it, it definitely did enough. Uh, I want to get into. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say I I, I got you because I know uh, we'll get into why you chose it and all that stuff real quick. But yeah, as far as the stats go, um, I'll be stat boy for you. You know, okay. Anybody out there remember what's that around the horn on ESPN? Yeah. 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 Hey man, stat guy, stat guy. I'm stat <laughs> this episode, man. Anything for my dog. Yeah. Uh, but the film was directed by Rob McKittrick. Mm -hmm. uh, he directed this. He wrote it as well. Yeah. Um, he also wrote the sequel. School, have you seen the sequels? Like Trash. still waiting and all that? Trash. You saw them though? Trash. <laughs> that's, that's how I felt about Entourage the movie. Trash. Um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny because McKittrick, he also directed, or no, excuse me, he didn't direct, but he wrote the screenplay for Tag. Yes. And you said earlier. I forget what year Tag came out. It might have been 2017, 2018. But mm -hmm. school, do you remember what I told you about Tag after I saw yep. it? Yep. Yeah. You, what you specifically called me and was like, bro, this is a this is a 06, 07 type comedy. Like the yeah. it was it was wild. Like you were shocked. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes perfect sense now that he's the same director because yep. you said it lightly. You said it in the most polite version mm -hmm. about how cringeworthy this movie is, but this movie's rough. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I had the same exact feeling. Once I left the movie theaters to see Tag, I called school and I was like, I can't believe this movie. I can't believe they allowed this. And that just lets you know where our society is. Yep. I, can't, I can't believe they allowed this movie to be released with how yeah. politically correct everything is. This is definitely one of those high school, excuse me, one of those comedies we watched when we were in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, me and you talk about all the time off camera, just that drought of R-rated comedies. Yep, um, We had a spell of them right there in those early to mid 2000s. Um, and I say Hangover was like the real last one and there was a long drought. Yes. You didn't have any R-rated comedies and now they're kind of starting to come back. But it wasn't just R-rated, they were just, they were offensive. And that's mm -hmm. what 
waiting is. It's offensive as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of crazy. And, you know, it's funny. I, I never even told you this. A few months ago, I was at breakfast. At, I can't remember the spot. It was over in Liberty Township. Um, okay. Not too far from you. Okay. And it was like I was sitting at the bar area. So it looked like a diner. And there was this older couple next to me. And I don't know how the conversation, because it wasn't my combo. It was them two in there and the bartender talking about movies. And they're like, have you seen Waiting? And I, they, I, I didn't say anything, but I was listening to them. And yeah. it was like, it's pretty raunchy. And the, the woman was like, yeah, it's kind of raunchy. And I looked at them like, listen, I don't know what y'all into, but it's very raunchy. So yeah. if that's not your thing, please don't watch it, because it's one of Man. them movies. Yeah, it's one of them movies. But um, I'm jaw jacking, man. Let me go ahead and get into the stats real quick for you. As far as who stars in this film, yeah. and that's, this is crazy too, school. I want to get your opinion on it. Okay. Um, you just mentioned that the budget was $3 million. Mm -hmm. If they made this movie in 2010, just five years later, how much yeah. you think that budget would have went up just from having to pay the people that were in this movie? At least it at least been fitting. At least another, yeah, I'll say another twelve million uh, easy. Um, because some of these people you probably wouldn't have gotten them in there anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, and it's, since we're since we're teasing it, we might as well mention we have Ryan Reynolds who stars Mo who plays Monty, um, yep. Anna Ferris who plays Serena. John Francis Daly, he plays Mitch, the quiet guy. School, I know you'll get into that later on. Mm -hmm. um, Justin Long, who had a nice, nice run. Um, he did. As, yeah, he played Dean. You have David Kushner, who plays Dan. Um, he's been, what was that? Uh, he was in The Office. Yes. He was in Hot Club Time Machine. He's been in a ton of different stuff. Man. Uh, one of my kind of just goofy type of dudes. I know he's, played, he's the manager in this film. Uh, Luis Guzman as Rodimus. Pachanga. <laughs> yeah, man. Who played Bishop? Who played Bishop School? So, excuse me? Who played Bishop in this movie? Bishop? Yeah. The Black Cook, man. Come on. I was setting it up for you. Your guy. Who? Sh Sean McBride? Yeah. Yeah, that's my dog. He uh he plays a uh dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a, okay. He wants the dishwasher. He's the nigga with the wisdom, man. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure there's somebody like that always at the restaurant. Always, bro. Uh, always. You have Caitlin Doubleday as Amy, Alana Yubak as Naomi. Yes. I know you said you relate the most to Naomi. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure we'll talk about that. Vanessa mm -hmm. Lingis as Natasha. Uh, <laughs> Blast from the past. Andy Milanakis <laughs> as Nick. Uh, you have Dane Cook. As Floyd, and then you also have Emmanuel Shrieky. I'm, I'm gonna mess up her name, but if you know, Not you know, man, that's Sloan. Sloan, Sloan Montaraj. Yes. Uh, but star studded cast, especially for back yes. then. When you see what they've done now, you look at this goofy movie, you're like, damn, man, this is just 90 minutes of fuckery. Um, they got a lot of good stars to be in it. Um, I think that pretty much covered the stats and everything that you wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna put the ball right back in your court, and I just wanna ask you, what made you go with waiting? So what what originally made me go with waiting is another week in the books, uh, which was again, if you haven't heard, listened to it, it, not even necessarily my the one I'm on, just check them all out, man. Great, great, great podcast. Um, but we had a conversation about restaurants and etiquette and, and a whole bunch of other things of that nature. Um, and I told them guys, I, I asked them on the pod, I said, Have you guys ever seen waiting? And they were like, nah, I'm like, yo, y'all gotta check that out. And then off uh, off camera and off the air, I guess, I, I told them, like, you know what? I'm going to do waiting. I'm going to force you niggas to see that shit. Like, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm hoping that me doing this pod will force them to watch it along with a, a whole lot of other people. Now, this movie, like we talked about, is raunchy. It's, it's wild. But it's a lot of shit that that goes on in this movie that is that's real like it happens every day and there are rules to this fucking game and you gotta play them gotta play them yeah and if you're in our generation then it won't be anything i don't, I don't want to overhype it because you've obviously yeah. seen movies that vulgar um but if you haven't watched movies like that then it might be a little bit of a shot because it is like i said it's a lot going on um before we move forward i do just want to let the good people know that if you haven't seen it and you do want to watch it I believe it is streaming on Freebie, which is mm -hmm. on Prime Video. So it's their, it's their free movie service with ads. Uh, so if you have Prime Video, you can check it out there. Um, 
and I know personally, like you said, I know you've been in the food industry since you were 18. Yeah. Uh, and I always salute you for that, my brother, because uh, I don't know how you do it. And I know you've told me horror stories as far mm -hmm. as uh, what goes on. And I'm really looking forward to hearing, you know, your takes on this film, uh, because even though I have even though I'm not going to partake in like the actual discussion, mm -hmm. um, I do. You got me hit to this film. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't watch this. This might have been a, uh, dare I say this might have been one of those buyback specials for you. Yep. Like you got this from buybacks and i don't know how did you how did you get into this film because like when did you first see it uh buyback so i first saw it so it came out in 05 i probably first saw this 08 okay because like, like i was first, just out of high school yep just out of high school um and i want to say i want to say someone i was working with told me about this movie like an older cook was like you ever seen a movie called Waiting? Nah, check it out. Check it out. You get a chance. And I was like, all right, fuck it. And just so happened, buybacks, you know, whatever, whatever. Watched it. The next, the, when Rich can, when we see a movie that's just like either funny as shit, serious shit, great act, anything, we picking up our phones immediately. So I believe mm -hmm. you, you, I don't, you might have been in school, but I definitely remember the next time I, yeah, saw I was in Toledo. After I, you came down for Christmas, something. I was like, bro. I need an hour and a half from you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched that with you for the first time, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, multiple times I watched it with you, but definitely that first yeah. view. Let me ask you, since you were in the restaurant, since you were actually working um, in the restaurants at the time that you saw it, do you remember what your reaction was? Because I'm sure it was like looking at your real life, but even going back to work the next day, like how many people you told, like, hey, man, how many of y'all seen this? Yeah, So on and so forth. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, whoever would listen, I hit them with it. Like, bro, check this out. I'm, I'm even positive that a few people, like this went around the job. The DVD went around the job a few times, like for at least a good month. Um, people was borrowing this movie from, from me. And as you know, Rich, that's, that's tough Like to, to pan out one of our movies. <laughs> right, man. Um, Some certain things don't lead to crib. Yeah, yeah. But it, it made it home. It made it home. Shout out to Fresh, man, because, um, Man, he could have easily been on this on this one too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, because y'all both were in the trenches together, mm -hmm. in that restaurant life, and I think that's the that's a unique perspective that I'm looking forward to hearing you discuss on this episode. Which is, um, I wasn't working, and this company's no longer around. HH Greg, it was an electronic mm -hmm. and appliance store. Um, think of your circuit cities and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I wasn't working at H.H. H. Greg when 40-Year-Old Version came out, but I remember when I did start working there, like the smart tech thing and just yeah. how that was so realistic. I'm like, damn, this is kind of our life. Or uh, until you worked a cubicle job, yeah. um, office space won't, office space is going to hit a little harder if you've done a job like that. Yeah. Um, and there are certain things, especially when I think when it comes to occupation, when it comes to what you do for a living, when they make a movie about it and kind of expose all the fuckery that goes on, I'm sure it just, I'm sure you love waiting a different level than what I would or the average person yes. that's never been in mm -hmm. the food industry, correct? Yes, absolutely. Because I can, I can associate so many people with every character in this movie. I know, I know a Monty. I know, I say I relate a little bit to Naomi, but I also have a little Monty in me. Like, um, <laughs> especially, you know, that, that, you know, uh, let me see, hostess, like bashing shorties in the kitchen, like just, just shit is real. You know, that, that the game, you know, it's a game that's in this film that not that game. We ain't play that type of game, but we do play games. <laughs> like it's some crazy yeah. shit that be going on in the kitchen. And, uh, specifically like there's a, not to rush into scenes, but there's a scene where, um, they have a, a horrible, a horrible guest and the kitchen decides to fuck with her food. Like that happens every day. And there's a scene where Monty says she broke the number one rule. Don't fuck with people who prepare your food. Like you don't do that at all. Yeah. I tell people all the time, and this is something I got from you school and it's real game. And I mean, to this day, I'll tell people it feels listening to this. I say this to them often. I'm like, bro, I don't, I don't even order from a restaurant if it's an hour, if it's within an hour when they're supposed to close. Because school, I never forget. You told me the best thing one day. You said, 
never stop a person, <laughs> never stop a person from getting home. Facts. And it was so simple, but it was the realest shit ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, because food and retail are cousins. Yes. You know, I was on the retail side of things for a very long time. And obviously you were on the food for a very long time. We're both yeah. past that now. Yeah. Uh, thankfully. Thank God. Uh, yeah, exactly. But they're cousins. <laughs> and I think you all know what that feels. We all know that feeling when it's closing time and motherfucker walk in five, ten minutes before. And it's just like, bro, where you been all day? Mm -hmm. All day. Like you just now wanted to come and or people say the dumb shit to you. Like when you have to work a holiday Hey, they got you working today. Why? Because you ain't here. Because you That's here. Why we ain't here working. Yeah. Little dumb shit like that. Um, the one thing, the reason I brought up food and retail being cousins is because I don't know how much you might know today. I'm curious. At least back when we were working, our teenage twenties, all that kind of stuff, man. That was it. Was the wild west for real? Yeah. And um, not necessarily in a good way all the time. But there was just, I think if you haven't worked either one of those industries, you might be shocked at how much you can get away with mm -hmm. as far as workplace behavior. Like if there was, an, put it like this, if there was an HR on site at retail stores, like individual retail stores and individual restaurants, they would never yeah. have anybody to work. Nope. Everybody would be fired. Facts. Um, would you say that the culture is toxic? Would you say that it's very toxic culture as far as? Um, the restaurant and retail just culture as far as how co-workers discuss because it is kind of a um you kind of alluded it's kind of a cesspool in a sense man hey you, yeah man she goes thing down. On? yes <laughs> 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 fuck yes um yeah that goes without question and then back to what you said if there was an HR on site what yeah. what especially when it comes to that restaurant shit like you know, it's so it's frowned upon in most jobs for people to have relationships. And I mean, managers and servers or waitresses and hostesses and, 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 and all through this movie, you see relationships like they don't care about that shit for real. <laughs> yeah, we know we ain't supposed to do it, but eh, if you won't tell, neither will I. Shit. That's usually how it works, and that's the. I think that's the. Um, you just you just made me think of this. Those two industries, and we'll, we'll, let me let me take retail out of it because this movie's about restaurants. So restaurants specifically is one of those industries where you have to let shit slide because you can't afford to not have people there. Yeah, like you can get away with the most. Like you really mm -hmm. got to try to yep. to get up out of there. Um, yeah, because they can't afford to have people missing or not showing up and getting backed up. I think there's a scene in this movie where somebody was off and they got backed up for a dinner rush and just the chaos of it. So just yes. imagine being down one or two people. Yes. Uh, I couldn't and, even imagine that. And the, the worst part about it is the manager nine, nine times out of ten, and this is something I've learned in the restaurant industry, is they they hire a lot of these managers outside of restaurant. Like, they don't have much uh, kitchen experience so and there's a scene in this movie where that happens where the the gm is like trying to set the window up and send food out and he he's he's acting like he knows what he's doing but naomi's character finally comes in and says, get the fuck out the way because that's how it mm -hmm. is at 6 30 you got three tables and there's uh three tables in front of your three tables of food. So you want all this shit out, man, it, it gets crazy. And you got this manager who swears he knows what he's doing and he really don't. So no, get the fuck on. <laughs> and and, and yeah, I've, I've been that guy to tell a manager, yo, get the fuck out my way. I got this. Like, and all they can do is move. <laughs> what you going to say? You going to send me home? I'm your star. I'm Michael Jordan back here. <laughs> That's real. That's I've, real. I've been that... put in the office and told by a manager like, yo, I know you the best, but I, I, you can't talk to me like that. Like I'm like, bro, listen, <laughs> then do my job. Because that's the. I'm glad you said that part too. Because I remember when the bear first came out. Shout out to FX, the bear. Um, just wants the Golden Globe Awards man. for acting in that show. Man, incredible show. One of my Great favorite show. shows on television. Great show. Um, but I remember watching season one of the bear. 
and hitting you up because once again, anytime I see anything food related or restaurant related, I get your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember telling you how you got to be. I, I think I even posed it in the form of a question. Like, y'all really be talking to each other like this? Like, I don't. You, you mentioned that outsider, people coming from the outside into that industry. And mm -hmm. that's not something that you can come from the outside into, I don't think, as a worker. No. Nah. Because I couldn't. I, the 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 way that people are talked to or talk to each other and how normal it is how easy they can just brush it off and move like somebody like me you talk to me crazy like that now nah, we no we gotta have a conversation about this right mm -hmm. now and y'all could just say all the time get the fuck out of my way you stupid motherfucker yep you know what i'm saying you fucking up the line and then it's yep. nothing it's no beef afterwards it's like it's kind of in the moment you might even have a shouting match a yep. shouting match excuse me Thanks. Facts. But you don't take none of that shit with you, or even if you do, like it might be some. Let me ask you: Is there has there ever been kitchen beef? Absolutely. Like where you just don't. We got to work together, but I really don't fuck with this person or I really uh, I don't, don't fuck with this server, so I'm about to mess up her order for her table. Let me tell you something. My favorite time of the year when I didn't like a fucking server when I worked at uh this one restaurant that does endless shrimp. My favorite, my favorite time was in the shrimp because the way they set it up is they once they make their order after they order their first round of shrimp, they have to put in the next 10 to 15 shrimp. I would take the if I ain't like the server, bro, I would the, the ticket would print up. I would take it. I would ball it up and I would throw it away. Now this server is like. Where's my shrimp? I put in three orders for it and everybody in the kitchen and I'm the lead of the kitchen. So I'm hitting the whole line with. Yo, Deborah, shit, is dead. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's foul, man. Is there, like is, that. is there that uniformity? Like in the movie, you see it. All right, mm -hmm. waiting. Um, you see the uniformity between like the wait staff and the kitchen. Yes. And not only just how they kind of click up, but also how they need each other. Yeah, they're also there's a scene. That more than, I think everybody needs a kitchen. Like, I don't think the kitchen really yeah. needs anybody. No, um, and and that's the I think uh, as much as as much as I don't like Dan, the character Dan in this movie, he does have a a, a, a scene where he it's pretty much the pre dinner meeting where he tells them you know when when the rush comes like you guys got to have each other's back, which is always a fact. And he said you know you got to work together. If you piss off the hostess, she's not going to seat the 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 server. And then if the server's mad and she pisses off the kitchen, then your tickets will be late. Like it's all uniform. But the one the one area you don't want to fuck up is the kitchen. Like we are the heart and soul. You feel me? So just like I just told you about Deborah, I don't fuck with you, Deborah. Now let's say I'm hitting Jessica, I'm hitting Jessica. Jessica shit coming out quick. You hear me? Jessica, De <laughs> Deborah pissed at Jessica because Jessica shit floating. <laughs> Jessica so, turning tables all night. <laughs> so how does that? How does that get? How does that get um reconciled? Like how do like? Because at some point you can't just keep fucking Deborah over. Like she's got to say something to somebody or yes. something's yes. got to happen to where you get you, Deborah's orders got to come out. Like her people got to be right. So how does that happen? Like, what's that process like? So I will say this as it, yes, they tell the manager, but as it, I will say this as it, as time moved on and um, technology got, you know, more advanced, it got a little bit harder to make those moves because they can go to the computer and look it up. Like, damn, she did bring in these 16, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but when I first started, it was just printed up on paper. Like, so they couldn't go back. So they would just tell her, ring it in again, ring it in again, ring it in again, ring it in again. But, you know, as time got a little more advanced, as things got a little more advanced, it did get a little bit harder. Like where, where Anthony, shout out to my dog. I know he won't mind. Anthony come back, listen, brother. <laughs> now, now Deborah been ringing in shit all night, man. Why, why you doing it like that? <laughs> hey, Anthony, a legend, man. I still got a... Uh... I still have a playlist um, <laughs> on my title. So I have title for streaming services. Yeah. Uh, and me and school, me and school will share the title. 
Yeah. And I remember one day I saw this play. Like, that's the best thing about sharing music with somebody. You see yeah. some shit like, what the fuck they listen to this for? <laughs> but I remember one day I saw this playlist called Anthony Approved Playlist. And I'm like, yep. what's this? And I remember school would say, yeah, man, you know, I was playing some music and it was, fuck this, bitch, that. And Anthony was like, hey, man, <laughs> can't be can't be playing all that here so school really went and made a, a playlist that would be approved by anthony that he could play mm-hmm. in, in the mornings i'm assuming and stuff like yep. that so i just thought that yep. was funny shout out to anthony man anthony shout out to anthony. anthony smelling like it super is that smelling anthony? Like it. come on man you know it you smelling it with anthony yeah man yeah. That's, a, that's a great story <laughs> um all right i just i'm sure i'll continue to do this because mm-hmm. This movie's gonna have tons of examples, but I always I always like to get some information about your background and just these crazy stories. Um, before we get into scenes and categories, one thing that you always like to do on uh, schools gifted pleasures is ask the simple question: Is this a good movie, a good bad movie, or just a bad movie? And I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. What is this? Oh, man, I've I've been really battling in my head with this one. As far as I'm concerned, this is a good movie. And I say that because the nostalgia that the the memories that this shit brings back for me, the, you know, like I said about the, the Me Too and all that, like times have changed so much, but this brings back a, just a different time. Like I, I, I kitchens don't, don't run like this anymore. Um, Monty's don't really exist as much as they used to um sp- especially that that hostess that's 17 you know not i don't condone any of that Bro, shit that, but that, that, is, that yeah man that shit is real though like um so yeah it just it's, it's a good movie man and and the origin um you talked about uh director rob mckittrick rob, rob mckittrick um, he actually worked in a restaurant in Orlando, Florida for about three, four years. And that's how he came up with the script, man. Like just writing stories. Every time something would happen, he'd write it down and just, this could be in a movie. This shit's so crazy. And eventually that's what happened. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Pops, man. When I worked yep. at, uh, when I worked, it, I guess this was the closest I've been to the food industry. Um, I didn't work in the kitchen, but it was a... There was a kitchen at this establishment, and they threw birthday parties for children. Let's just mm. put it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they make a good pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, uh, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, anyway, I remember working there, and I remember coming home from like work and telling Pops crazy stories about just certain yeah. things, and kids and all that. And he would get weak. I mean, Pops would be there getting weak. <laughs> and he would always tell me, like, you need to write this stuff down. Mm-hmm. Like you need to write a book about this. Like, trust me, people will listen to these stories. The stuff you're telling me, this is crazy. Yep. Um, and going to your point, school, like certain certain things just happen. And going to Rob's point, like I got to write this down because this is nuts. Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm positive, I'm positive yeah. that there's maybe ten percent exaggeration in this film. Like, I think yeah. everything that happened in this movie really happened. And yeah. it might sound crazy, but unless you worked in that in that field, you would know. Oh, that's easy. That's like I ain't even. Matter of fact, I got crazy stories. Like I got yep. stories crazier in this movie. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, yeah. Shout out to Rob for writing that down or giving us this, uh, giving us this film. I will say that I think that if you are into the raunchy comedy um, lane, then this is definitely a good movie. This oh, is yeah. a movie that you can put on um, background music or background noise and just mm-hmm. get some laughs because it's that over the top. Um, yeah. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, shout out to Clifton Pat, man. Is this Ryan Reynolds pick another movie? And for those who don't know, there's a fame, I don't want to say famous clip, but me and school always laugh at this clip where Clifton Pat's like in a mall or shopping area. And it's Clifton Pat. So obviously, you know who Clifton yeah. Pat is, especially if you're from the culture. Yes. And Clifton Pat has like over 200 movie credits, like a ridiculous amount. Crazy. And there was somebody coming up. Came up to him with the camera, like, yeah, man, you was the dude that was, you had the daughter, he was touching the, he's like, hey, man. Like, he was talking about one of his roles, and he was like, hey, put, put the power, say, hey, man, pick another movie. Pick another like, movie. I got way too many movies for you to be coming up and picking about one of my most heinous roles. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Is this for Ryan, you mentioned the underage aspect of it, just the, do you think that he looks back at this and like, Ugh, I hope nobody ever asked me about waiting? You know what? I'm going to say no, and here's why I'm going to say no. When the last time you watched Van Wilder? 
<laughs> Shout out to Spike, man, because I was just talking about uh, one of the, um, one of the teams I root for in college basketball. Well, my favorite team, should I say, not one of the teams. My team in college basketball mm-hmm. has a fifth year senior. And me and I was telling them, like, that nigga Van Wilder, man. He's been in school for a minute. <laughs> um, but to answer your question, it's been a long time, like a very long time since I watched it. Yeah, it's a, it's a specific uh, scene in there with the dog. Right. Just, let's keep it moving, man. Yeah, right, so I, I think that's his uh, pick another movie. <laughs> I just thought about uh, I just thought about coming to America, man. <laughs> when they were showing, they were seeing the apartment for the first time. Niggas, damn shame what they did to the dog. Oh. <laughs> what happened to the last two security guards? Hey. Um, all right, bet. So, with what would you do? I want to. I really want to hear your thoughts on this. Mm-hmm. What would you do to make this film better? If anything, man, I don't. I think it's I would perfect. say nothing. This and is when I, this excuse me. When I say perfect, I mean perfect for what it's about. I think they covered all the bases, and it's the perfect one. Ninety minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chef Kids. Yep, they did. They did ev- everything in this movie is perfect. This, no lie, no exaggeration. This is a. A, a 6 p.m. to 11 o'clock dinner rush at your favorite restaurant. This is it, you know. At all those, at all those Red Lobster, Olive Garden, all those type of restaurants, Applebee, all that. This is this, like, and it's perfect. Chef's kiss. And you know what really stands out about this film? Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've been talking about how raunchy and over the top it is, but yeah. it does give you that balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you have Justin Long's character, I think Dean, what's his name? Yes, Dean. Uh, because all of this is real as well. You you don't just have the Montes, you have the Deans, or even yeah. Naomi. Naomi's one of those restaurant lifers. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember, <laughs> shout out to Donovan, man. Shout out to D Hall. Uh, me and Donovan back in the day worked with this girl, and I think one of my dudes asked her, this might have not been Donovan there, but Donovan knows the story because he knows the woman. But one of my boys asked her, like, yo, so what you, you know, what's your, what's your next move? Like, what's going on? She was like, Nothing. This is it. Like, this is it. Like, that's all you want to do. Yep. This is it. And Naomi's that. Like she's just one of yes. those. Like no matter what happens, whether it's this restaurant or the next, I'm going mm-hmm. to be yep. serving. I'm going to be doing this. This is what I do. This is like kind of my hustle. Uh, but it also has your dean to. This ain't me, bro. Like I'm good at it. Yeah. But I know there's bigger and better things. And they even tease that aspect with them. You see, Dean's a little different. Yeah. He's yeah. on the horizon for other things. But yeah, Monty's who are just. Mm-hmm. Just kind of who they are, yeah. Um, and even Mitch, the new guy, um, yeah. who's really trying to figure out this whole world. And I could—that's probably one of my favorite characters in this film because he's the avatar for us. Yes, he's the avatar for the people who never worked in this industry. And you looking mm-hmm. like this can't be real. This can't be how y'all work. <laughs> um, because it's so left field. So it, I, I say all that to say I think the film for as for what it is. It did a really good job of kind of showing you all the angles, so you get a yes. good balance of a little bit of everything. So if mm-hmm. you, I don't think there's a way you can watch this movie without identifying who you would be or who you are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, I just had to shout that out. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. I think for what it is, I think it's perfect. Um, do you want to get into some categories? Yeah, let's do that. All right, bet, man. Let's go ahead and get in the scenes, man. I want to hear your thoughts. What are some of your favorite scenes throughout the film? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with my one of my very favorite scenes, and that scene is um, I talk I kind of touched base on it a little bit, but when Dan is just giving that giving that spiel of um during the during the dinner rush we we got to work together as a team man like you know you can't piss off the uh servers don't piss off the hostess because if the host is pissed off she won't seat you and then um servers don't piss off the kitchen because if you piss off the kitchen then all your food gonna be late you know what i mean like in, in the kitchen oh, the, you see he didn't even de- talk to the kitchen there is no you don't need to talk to the kitchen the kitchen knows what it's doing and then it flies into um and it kind of coincides is Dan pulling Dean in the office and <clears throat> and telling him he wants him to be a manager. Now I bring this up because one thing for sure and two things for certain ain't no secrets in that building. Like he thought that 
he that Dan told him like, oh, you, I want you to be a manager. Naomi's right outside the door. And then she runs and tells everybody. And then, you know, Dean goes and talks to a couple people and they all keep bringing up like, so are you going to take the manager job? He's like, "What? how you know that, bro? That is real life. And I know it happens at other jobs, but it's nothing like working at a restaurant, bro. That shit travels fast. He took Monty told Dean it's people on the off day that know you were off with that job. Are you going to take it or what? <laughs> like, and that's real. Hey, man. That's, yeah. Have you, I think there is something to be said about that friction. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you this. Let me ask you in a different way. Okay. Is it possible to work in the kitchen, on the floor, at a restaurant, and manage that same restaurant? Do you think that's possible? Yes. I don't, I don't see how... And I went through a certain experience like this in retail where mm -hmm. when I got into the manager and training program, yeah, the, they made it a point to put me out of the store that I was selling with. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I didn't want to, I couldn't be in them with them because they knew me as that. Like we mm -hmm. had our own jokes and clown and did all types of wild breaking the handbook types of shit together. <laughs> um, so it's hard to kind of take direction from somebody when you know like man you was on the same shit i was doing we could right get out of beat it. Mm -hmm. um, i i would i would imagine in the restaurant industry people would it'd be hard to kind of gain some respect unless you already had it yes and it, it all depends it all depends on what type of uh worker you were you know prior to the managerial uh position being offered to you um, but I would I would imagine that they wouldn't offer it to you unless they saw something in you anyway. Um, yeah, because that's know. a flex too. Because mm -hmm. I'm up with you. I'm one of you. Talk, you touched on it earlier. Anytime I went into the job I was just mentioning, I didn't. I could have started in the manager program, but I didn't yeah. because I wanted to know how that shit worked. I want to know the ins and outs. Yeah, how I'm gonna teach somebody to do something if I've never done it myself. Exactly. That's just who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. um, and I could, it, if you are good at your job, like you just said, it will give you a little bit of benefit. So when yeah. things do get tight, when you do have that dinner rush and Dan's giving that speech, they're not looking at it as like, Dan, you're a doofus. You don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, this school, like school, no, he didn't been here. He didn't been in the trenches with us. Like he didn't yep. did the rush. Like, so listen, yep. I'm not here. For, I'm not here for my health. I'm telling y'all this is what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. Trust me. This is what you need to do. Follow the guidelines. And I think that's a lot easier to trust Yeah. versus... You know, I'm school off the street. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, gotta get this together, and everybody looking at you, man. Get this weirdo out of here. Not saying you a weirdo, but you get me. no, no. I got you. Uh, another another scene I want to talk about is um, just the dinner rush. Once it starts, once it starts, once. So a little prior to that, you got Naomi, who you said she's a lifer. Naomi came out, and it was like six people on the floor. There's always that person that's mad at the manager. Because, you know, there's six people on the floor and we only have, you know, six tables and I can I, I have a three table section, meaning I could have handled three of those tables. So why do you have six people? And she's like, Dan is an idiot. He's an asshole. Like just about money, um, which leads us to the dinner rush. And then you get all different types of customers. You get the you get the uh, the, the 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 married couple where the guy's ordering for his wife like dude really like you know he he, he orders a steak and orders a, a couple of shots of whiskey for himself and then he orders a, a a a water for his wife and then he goes you know what it's our anniversary she can have a pepsi like imagine you being a server and you have to deal with that type of shit like like damn this shit's fucked up and all you're gonna do is run to the back and tell everybody like dog it's some dude out here he treating this woman like us like shit bro this shit crazy so let me ask you this question. all right so let me ask you this i gotta get i gotta ask my question yeah um how do i want to tie this in because i just thought about a movie when you said that yeah um let me tie in the movie first because a lot of people okay. probably haven't seen it let alone heard of it and if okay. you have, this is what this whole podcast is for um at school you might remember because this is an 85 85 classic you might okay. you might have been a little too young but yes. I, I saw it over 85 85 and on one of the million uh, movie channels that they had okay do you remember a movie that called the last supper 
Cameron Diaz and Courtney B. Vance? Nope. All right, bro. So it's one of those indie moves. It's 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 if you've seen it, then you you, you yell it right now, like what? I ain't never heard nobody talk about that movie. <laughs> I don't want to get into the premise, but let's just say that they would have certain people over for dinner, and based on how they thought that person was, they took actions into their own hands. I'm just mm. gonna leave it at that for people okay. who haven't seen the movie. If you decide to see it one day, um, I think it came out like '95 or something like that. The Last Supper, like I, yeah, I definitely remember that movie. Like yesterday, '85, '85, clapped sitting on that couch in the living room, bro. Yeah. Ah, man, I just had a flashback. But damn, I say all that to say, with them taking stuff in their own hands, how do you leave it at just your rule to us? As far as like the wait staff or whatever, so we gonna fuck with your shit. Or if you're just a terrible person in general, we gonna fuck with your shit. Is there a line that separates that? Like, ah, eh, that ain't our business. He might be a dickhead, but I ain't about to fuck up this man food. Or yeah. has yeah. anybody ever even has anybody even come back and say hey, this guy's an asshole? I would love if something just happened to his food and somebody did it for him. I don't know. You yeah, know what I'm it, to say? It, it it happens. It definitely happens. But it, it for the most part, it 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 doesn't. It's just. You know, we could come back there and, you know, you talk shit, blase, blase. Now, when he when you do cross that line and, um, for example, he, he does. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. Uh, they both I think he ordered a well done steak or something and they bring the food out and he's like, damn, damn, boy, what took so long? And Dean was like, well, you both ordered well done steaks like that usually takes a minute, which it does. Like, especially when you if you've been serving long enough, you know, when you get a certain type of uh, guest that you tell your you will tell your kitchen like, yo, he he's an asshole. So burn his shit. Like I if he, I got a feeling if he sees a sliver of pink, he's going to you know what I mean? He's going to bring it mm -hmm. back. So just burn his shit. And I'm sure. That's what Dean told the, the kitchen, um, which leads me to the other part of the scene is uh, the bitch of the day. The young lady who it's a table full of ladies and Amy is their server. And she says uh, the first thing she says to her is, you know, hey, welcome to I'm your server, blah, 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 blah. And she, the, the bitch, of, the bitch of the day says, I've been here the last four times we've been here. The food has been horrible. That's one of my. Why don't you come. My, that's one of my biggest pet peeves in food is like not once not twice not three times but four like we keep fucking your food back. up and you keep coming back yeah you're here no for way. Pick. ain't no way dog so then <laughs> so then she 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 uh she says to them how hard is your job and I, I've been in, I've been on that side as well. When I was at Red Lobster, I served for a couple months, and I've been on that side. You know, you you fuck up. We all human, so you might put mid well instead of well done, or you know. Anyway, the lady says, um, "Let me ask you a question. How hard is your job? Like to write down an order? How hard is your job?" And it's like, whoa, okay, got you. Let I take it back. I'm sorry. You're right. I did fuck your shit up. But not like how I'm about to. <laughs> and they take it back to the kitchen and thumbs up, thumbs down. They spit in her shit. They put pubic hair from under cheese. That shit happens. Listen to me. I've been in the industry a long time. Don't fuck with people that fuck with your food. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, school has told me some stories. I'm not saying that they were him. But he's told me some. Yes. I lose accounts of shit that people and. The most terrifying part of the stories are nobody ever knows. Nope. And they'll sit there and eat that whole steak like nothing happened. Yeah. It just tastes normal. Chances are if you, if you complain about your food and they and they take it back and bring it back out and they watch you eat it or they watch you cut it <laughs> or any of that, they fuck with your shit. Cause they want to, they want to watch you take that bite. They want to watch you so they can go back to the kitchen and be like, "Oh, he ate that shit." Ah! They back there clowning your shit. Clowning. So before we, before you get to your next scene, I gotta ask you about the famous send, sending food back scenario. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes food can be messed up. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here to ask you, what, what's the protocol for somebody sending food back? Is, is, is there some 
is there some admittance on the kitchen side? Like, oh, damn, you know what? I misread that. I did fuck that up. Let me get them together. Or does it become to does it come to a point where like, oh, this person being a dickhead? Like, all right, you want to send your food back? Coming right back to you, sir. Yeah, um, it's all about it's all about the mama. My mama always say it's a right and wrong way to do any and everything, and it's all about how you do it. Um, and I get I get nervous to send food back for that reason. Like, even I'm the most polite when it comes to it, but I just like, man, I don't want them to think that I'm dogging them. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem with it. That's that middleman you got because you have a server. So you're being nice to the server and you're telling the server like, hey, I don't know if you remember, but I ordered it. You know, I ordered this steak well done and it's it's a little meat. It's medium. It seems medium. She might have fucked up. You feel me? But she go back to the kitchen. She tell the kitchen like, ah, this he an asshole and he da 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 da. So that's where that line is. Like you wanna, See. you wanna hope that <laughs> that it is. See, that's that bullshit. Mm -hmm. You wanna hope that's that. that you wanna hope that it's something simple like your fries cold. Cause ain't nobody going. You know, motherfucker gonna just throw down some more fries and keep it moving. But if you if you're if you're um if you're I want to say disrespecting the cook in the sense of you know, this steak is this nine times out of 10, they, they, they're going to temp their steak. So if you ordered this steak medium, but it, it's not medium, how you like it, keep that steak, bro. Just take it home, bro. I'm telling you, take, take that shit home. Don't, don't take it back because it's not worth it. Who knows? You know, who knows? Yeah, that's too many hands. That's too many hands involved <laughs> and too much uncertainty. The fact that your answer wasn't, oh, it's going to be cool. Like, just let me know. I don't even want to. I don't even want to play that game with anybody. Because mm -hmm. it, because it could be a lifer it. back there. Could be a lifer back there who swear I'm the, I'm the best, I'm the best medium rare steak cooking nigga in the world, and you gonna tell me this ain't medium rare? You got me fucked up. <laughs> hey man, I like never that. forget uh, at that at that uh, restaurant slash children's entertainment center that I worked at. Yeah, uh, I remember a customer complained about. There wasn't enough sauce in a pizza, bro. I couldn't even. I couldn't even. I can't even accurately give you a description of what the manager did with the <laughs> sauce on the pizza the next time, bro. I mean, it was all sauce, bro. You couldn't even see no dough. Mm, mm, mm. Like he and, and he sent it out there on some dickhead shit. Yeah. Like this enough sauce for you on that? I'm like, yep. oh, bro, this whole industry is nuts. Mm -hmm. It's nuts, man. And just so real quick before you get into your next scene, um, hopefully nobody's out there ordering well done steaks. I just wanted to say that, uh, but yeah, what's your next thing? Man, stop it, man! I know, I know things? what's happening, but I just hope our our listeners, hopefully, or your listeners, should I say, hopefully, they ain't uh, ordering their steaks well done. Man, they are. Um, <laughs> another scene of mine is uh, Monty and his mom. So there's a scene where Dean is talking about this gentleman, Ch Chet who he went to uh, high school and college with and, you know, Chet's mom's met Dean or seen Dean's mom. And they were conversating about how good Chet's doing. And, you know, of course, you know, Dean came up, how's Dean doing? Oh, well, he kind of dropped out of college. He's working at shenanigans up the street. Side note, I always wondered this, and this just came to my head. So I got to say it. I always wondered if this is the same shenanigans that they was talking about in uh super troopers office space <laughs> oh shenanigans no i don't know you remember he's, what's that restaurant with all the stuff on it <laughs> somebody say shenanigans one more time i'm a pistol whip them nigga said far what's been. that restaurant you like with all the stuff all on the waffles shenanigans you mean shenanigans <laughs> could have been um, man but now uh damn where was i going with that man Um, you were just talking about uh, Dean and his mom. He's oh, like, yeah. So, out of college. so, yeah, he dropped out of college. And uh, basically, Dean was upset about hearing about Chet graduating, having making all this money. And he's talking about his mom. And he goes and Monty, he goes or Monty says to him, he's like, damn, dude, what's up with your mom? And he's like, Dean was like, bro, it's my mom. She wants me to succeed. He's like, I'm glad my mom's not like that. And they cut to a scene of Monty and his mom 
talking and bruh, the conversation they had, I thank God for my mom, but I'm guessing their mom's like this. And she just was going in on this man. Like I called your house around two o'clock and you didn't answer. Let me guess you were sleeping. He's like, yeah, if that's what you want to call it. He's like, well, and then he gets, he goes into this whole rant about, you know, I, I, I was sleeping all night. Cause you know, I, I got this press prostitute and we, <laughs> we, I got this prostitute. We were getting it in and this and that. And he's like, so yeah, I took the prostitute home. So me and the prostitute and she goes, the hooker and I, <laughs> like she's an English teacher. Like, <laughs> and uh, she I says, the whole uh, was fried. hey, money was fried. She says, well, I hope you use protection because I would hate for you to procreate. He said, I do use protection, mom. I pull out. <laughs> she said, <laughs> she said, and so did your father. And you see what a shit he made of that. <laughs> like, yo. <laughs> I, but you know what? If you watch this, if you watch this movie, I can understand her. She that's years of frustration. Mm -hmm. right? She probably yeah. damn man. She's sick of this nigga, man. Yeah. Sick of money. Everybody want everybody want kids, so they find out what they like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like well, I don't even like you like that. <laughs> Ain't nothing crazy to have the kid, but not liking them as a person. <laughs> hey, <laughs> happens every day. Oh shit, yeah, man. Monty was a character, man. He's, yeah, he uh, definitely he's was. obviously the. He's the driving force of the film. Just mm -hmm. me. Yeah, man. Yep. So What's your next scene. Uh, the next scene I have is just uh, Shy McBride. All of his, all of his, his, any of his scenes, he just, he's just dropping wisdom on them cats, man. Like, and and just like I said, there's a whether it be a manager or a dishwasher or. Or a server who's been there 15 years, or whether it be a cook, it's always someone that works in that restaurant that's that's way beyond their prime, and and you wonder why they work here. You're like, damn, dude, like all this fucking knowledge. Why are you back here baking bread? Like, what, what happened to you? Like, and and you can mm -hmm. ask them, and you gonna find out some shit. Like, nigga, I did 15 years and and this and that, so. Um, I just like his character, man. I think that was really, really dope of them to really have a character like Sean McBride because you need that type of character. You need him. Did you have, did you have somebody like that? Oh, you yeah, absolutely. Stops? Absolutely. absolutely. I'm sure you rap to him like, yo, bro, how you end up here? What happened to you? Mm -hmm. That's why I just said that's what I said. Then ask somebody, yeah. Yeah, that's why exactly why I said what I said. My homie did like 15 years. He's like, man, this is the best I can do, man. Like, a lot of you know, you get these prison GDs and 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 associates and bachelors and motherfuckers don't even really recognize them. They doing it a lot more now. So shout out to these companies that are recognizing those. But 10, 15 years ago, they ain't give a fuck about that. So that's all the motherfuckers could do. That's um, good, man. One of my favorite characters in the movie, by the way. Who? Charlie McBride. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was he was because because you say because there's always that person who I want to say his name Stan. Mm -hmm. He was the like I said I've only worked worked one job where they had a kitchen, and he was the in high school. So mind you, I'm working after school, um, yep. but on the weekends, if you work one of the morning shifts, that's one of the few times you see Stan because he's so he's been there so long. He got the seniority schedule, so he does the Monday through mm -hmm. Friday morning shift, and he gets it as close as a nine to five as possible. Yeah, um, and he stays out the way, man. He don't he don't be in people's business. He don't want people in his. But if you sit down and talk to him, like, damn, bro, what you doing here? Right. Um, and it's always funny, you know, old old school black dude too. Yeah, same way. All this and all, like I can't emphasize enough all the shenanigans, no pun intended, that will go on. Um, you know, at these restaurants and stores, and it's hey man, it's hard to stay out of people's business because people bring it to you. Yes, they just find a way to just you know what I ain't here for that man. I'm here to get this check and get up out of here, man. I don't care what y'all got going on. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, man. So it's a lot more scenes, but I do want to. I want to end with this scene. This is my last scene that I'm going to talk about. Hopefully, um, you guys watch this movie. I'm going to end with the scene where uh, Monty um, has a a guest slash customer that is that has alzheimer's alzheimer's and at the end of it he says i don't care if he tips me or not because i mean let's be real um, older people aren't known for tipping 
So he says, I don't care if he tips me or not. That's the coolest, one of the coolest men that I've ever met in my life. And it goes back to something I said on uh, another week in the books is like, there are people that you meet in retail and in the, in the food industry that make you go, damn, this is why I do it. Like, I love this guy. Like if he, if, if, if he forgot his wallet, I'm going to take care of his meal. I don't give a fuck. Like this dude is great. So just that scene, just them bonding him, Mm -hmm. uh, him saying that, you know, like I said, it's always that, that person, you always meet somebody. Yeah. And that was cool of, uh, Monty. Um, I just got two things real quick and I didn't even watch the movie preparation just is just off memory okay. um one scene that i always enjoyed was my uh, was dean thinking that he had a real big opportunity oh um, got the table. yeah so dean like i told you guys he's school was just mentioning um dean's the guy that like you know you you can tell that he he doesn't fit there he reminds me of my boy thomas g yeah uh, i used to manage thomas at hh and just thomas like tom you ain't this ain't you bro like what you about to do next because i know you got something bigger um you know college dropout trying to figure things out and he thinks that he got a real opportunity this group of businessmen come in and they uh you know he pretty much he pulling out all the stops Dean, like hey man I'm, this is me this is what i do bro. i need mean, yeah. all y'all orders i ain't got to write nothing down they yeah. impressed with them and it was like hey man we impressed with ain't nothing like that too when you know it. yeah that man impressed with you, man. If you're interested, come and holler. And they gave him a business card for another restaurant. Yeah, he was so fucking mad. And as an audience, the way they set that scene up, perfect. You think yeah. this is his big break. Mm-hmm. And he sees the card, and it's like, damn. And then they pay him back to the table. I really hope he calls. Like, Nick, yeah, call him, man. Fuck yeah, you. Jeff um, Steakhouse or some shit like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, just to yeah. kind of, I, I just like that from the aspect of not everybody's a Naomi, and there are people to wear. Yeah. You, like you were just talking about with uh, Sean McBride's character. This is the mm-hmm. best that I could do. Yeah. And for a lot of people, that is the best they can do. And they're constantly searching for that next thing again. Until you've been in that situation, you're you're looking, you think it's there, and it's still not there. Like, I remember the day I got out of retail for good. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a glorious day. One of them, like, yep. I'm never going back. Or I hope I never have to go back. Um, and I haven't been back since. But it's just a big feeling because you kind of get a piece of your life back. Right. Um, yep. But all the moments leading up to like, man, I, I want to do this and that, or waiting for the right thing, those are rough moments. So to see that frustration uh, on Dean's face, that was great. And then also, of course, we got to talk about the ending um, with Mitch. Uh, so, Mitch, if you guys haven't seen this, Mitch is the new guy. He's shadowing Monty, of all people. Mm-hmm. And if you work a job, you've been the new person and you shadow somebody. And you've seen the company manual and the video on how to do things, and then you watch these motherfuckers on how they do shit. You kind of make those judgment calls, like, damn, do I? These, they, they crazy. Do I want to be here? Yeah. And Monty is quiet the entire day. Like every time, it's a running joke throughout the film. Anytime he's about to speak, he gets cut off by somebody. Yeah. Um, and then finally, at the end, man, he gets his moment. And he just gets, hey, he lays into everybody. everybody. Kind of like I said earlier, he's the avatar for us. For yes. the audience, for the people who haven't been in that industry, he yeah. kind of it's like he watched the movie and then had a chance to tell them all about themselves. And I just love that part of it and just how everything wrapped up. Um, and uh, I think the best part of that is he he does the goat, he, he hits him with the goat, which mm-hmm. is the the running the game. He hits him with the ultimate game move. Which is the goat, and that shit is that shit is crazy, man. It was it was dope, dope ending. Um, one thing I did forget, um, back to that etiquette thing, uh, when, the, like I said, we talked about it when the kitchen's ready to go home, um, because, uh, and I think that that was on purpose. Chet, Chet comes in, Chet comes in five minutes before they close and orders, uh, whatever he ordered and they all dropped it on the floor. And th- that's another way to get your food fucked with. If a restaurant closes, I- I'll say this, if the restaurant closes at 10, Get there by nine. If it closes at eleven, get there by ten. Get, an hour is cool, but anything past that, ten thirty and be nine thirty, don't do it, niggas, because they start cleaning up an hour ahead. So motherfuckers is for real in the back, just like looking at the clock, like ah, it's almost time, yeah. And then a motherfucker walk in at nine fifty five, ten fifty five, and here's the bad part about it: 
it'd be cool if you was just on some quick, like, yo, I just want a real quick burger. I mean, you might get a motherfucker that's cool. But if you come in there wanting the full experience, yo, we want to sit down. We want wine. We want a mixed drink. We want, like, you want the full restaurant experience at 9.55? Yeah, all right. All right, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. It's the worst. Yep. It's the absolute worst thing that you could do. Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier, don't don't prevent somebody from going home early. And, mm-hmm. you know, every job has a closing procedure. Mm-hmm. Kitchens are different because, like you said, they might close at 10, but they they not. I've seen it where you ain't walking out of there until there are plenty of days where I finish my part. All right, y'all, y'all be cool. And they still in there uh, putting stuff in the walk in and, yep. you know, making sure. Because obviously, that's all sanitary stuff, man. You can't just yep. casually throw this around. You got to make sure your kitchen clean. There's a whole mm-hmm. process to it. Yep. Um, one that I never wanted to be a part of. So even <laughs> if I'm working, um, you know, me in school used to work at Foot Locker back in the day. So mm-hmm. even if we're working at Foot Locker, you come in at 955, we close at 10. Yeah, we're gonna be salty, but we really ain't got much to do. Like we exactly. probably folded our t-shirts, yep. put the wall up and stuff. We just waiting on you to go so we can bounce. Yep. They waiting on you to go so they can actually clean up and then go. Like so mm-hmm. it might be in the whole another couple hours yep. um, that you can cost them. So yeah, that that whole thing. And then um also I forgot this one. Like I said, this is all off memory because I ain't even seen this yeah. movie, but this yeah. this part always gets me. Not leaving a tip. Man. Leaving it or what's worse, school? I know you were in the kitchen, so you didn't really deal with tips too much. Well, what's worse, not leaving the tip or leaving the cheap ass tip? Leaving leaving the cheap ass tip. I've seen I've seen at least in my day three to four servers lose their job because they followed someone out there and did exactly what Dean did and say, Yo, you left your change behind, and they go, Nah, that's your tip. And they go, Nah, you need this more than I do. Like, come on, man. This this bill sixty dollars, and you leave us, the bill six or fifty eight something, and you leave sixty. Like, come on, bro, for real. You can't leave me a five dollar bill. Come on, man. Keep that. <laughs> keep. And that's what's crazy. I'm the type of person that will tell you keep this, bro. Yeah. I don't even want this. Like, get out. Get on my face. Yep. Now, side note, one of the best things about um, and I don't know if they still do it, but when I was working at uh, working for Darden. They used to have like the credit, the 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 prepaid card or whatever for your check and all that. They the way that it was set up was, if you went out to eat, if you didn't have enough money for the twenty percent tip, then the card would decline. And I think I always thought that that was neat or cool. You know what I mean? Like the restaurant industry knows, like they won't even let you. It'll decline if you don't have enough to tip these people. Like that's dope. Like because that's how these people eat, man. They eat off these tips. They making three fifty five an hour, and they and they hoping that you gonna pay them. That's crazy, man. It's crazy that that's even still a thing. Mm-hmm. But they ain't yep. paid teachers yet either. So what do I expect? Yeah. Um, yeah. You didn't have any more scenes, did you? No, that was it. That was it. Did you have quotes? Um, I don't really have many quotes. Um, a lot of them ain't appropriate, so I'm just gonna skip that. <laughs> That's fair. This is one of the. This is. <laughs> I'm not even being funny when I say this. I think if you combine Culture Garden and SGP, this is probably the raunchiest movie that we've probably discussed. Bro, I was gonna. I swear on. I swear on everything. I was gonna say that. I swear it. You took the words out of my mouth. I was gonna say this is probably the raunchiest movie we've ever done on here. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Easy. I'm not trying to hype this shit up. I don't want nobody to watch this and be like, "What? This is it?" Like, but come on, man, this was this is prime oh five oh six movies. I, and I think it's because of the we have the nostalgia with it, where we they don't. There's no way you will walk into a studio today in 2024, pitch this movie, and get it approved. Not the way this movie comes out. Mm-mm. You could do a movie nope. about food, but it's gonna be like the bear. Yes. You know what I mean? It's going to be that kind of side of it versus... And even, it's, and even the bear has its limitations. And what I mean by that is it's raw and, and raunchy and shit in a sense. But what saves it is it's a family thing. So they all kind of know each other outside of this restaurant. Like we're family. So we can say certain things. And some of the shit I'm mad at you about is not even related to this restaurant. I'm sorry at you for real life shit. You feel me? So... It's a different type of aspect, but this shit is just raw. 
No, nah, that's uh, that's fair, man. That is absolutely fair. Um, was this film? I meant to ask you earlier. Was this film up for any kind of Razzies or awards? No, no, nope. Which is surprising. Okay. But did you did you see the IMDb rating on this? Hell yeah, I saw the rating. It's see? a cult classic. It's a cult classic, bro. And you know, you know, you know, you know, rated that every every motherfucker who's ever stepped foot in the kitchen. Yep, yep. Because I rated it on. This is a seven for this me. It's spot on. Mm -hmm. It's spot on, bro. Like, if yep. you work in the kitchen, you, there's no way you can look at this film and be like, oh, nah, I ain't fucking with this. Like, this yeah. shit, you've experienced uh, a majority of what happened in this mm -hmm. film. And I don't want to keep overstating the point, but that's just kind of what yeah. it is. Even the uh, um, even the T Dog and Nick character, you know, back in the day, class. you know, Andy Milanakis, man, he was hot for like two years. And that 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 wigger, that white boy who thinks he's black and he knows our culture better than we do. Like just all that, man. It's always one of them that works in the kitchen. He's nine times out of ten, he's a cook. Um, but he usually a bus boy too. You get the bus boys, but nine times out of ten, he's a cook. Like um I tried to go to I tried to go this episode without mentioning them, but we didn't make it, <laughs> man. It's all good. It's all good though. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a scene still in school? No, I don't. I mean, Naomi. I would say Naomi. Naomi did her thing, man. Um, Naomi did her thing. I that, can't... The, 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 the way she had to turn it on and off. Yes. Like, she had a real, like, and she would be letting people have it and turn that corner and put on that smile for the yes. customer. That's just crazy. Yep. Yep. And, they, and that, I mean, that's that's the industry. I mean, be right there. You know, I've been in situations where motherfuckers be like, Shh, table seven's right there. I don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with your money. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with your bread. Mm hmm. So, um, yeah. Things to bother you? Nothing. Uh, listen, this, this, is, this is up there for me. This is, uh, you know, my rating system. Uh, Hell yeah, shit yeah, fuck yeah. This is the fuck yeah for me. Like, I'll, I'll watch this movie probably, especially now that I know that it's on freebie and I can watch it at any moment. I'll put this on this background in a week or two. Like, that's for the fuck of it. I love this movie. Nah, that's real. I, yeah. I'll definitely watch it and um, just check it out again. Just now that we've done it, like, I, mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting to be on this episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was like a last minute edition, so I didn't watch or prep for it. But now that we talked about it, I'm definitely going to spend the 90 minutes to watch it without question. Yep. It's just yep. one of those. Like, if you've seen it, you just rock with it. And it's got some silly yep. laughs. You've got to be into that cruel humor, but that's what we do. Um, did I ask you, what did I just ask you? Things that bother you? Yeah, things that bother me. All right. Anything wouldn't let that happen to me? Uh, the only thing, oh, yes, I do. I'm glad you brought that up because we didn't talk about Calvin. You remember Calvin? Um, I'm trying to think of Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. Who's Calvin? So, so Calvin is the character. Oh, yeah, man. Calvin, suck, lame ass. suck ass Calvin. So Calvin is the character. Rob Benedict, man. Shout out to Rob yeah. Benedict who played Calvin. Yeah. I forgot all about Shout out Calvin. to Rob Benedict. Yeah. There's a there's a Calvin in every restaurant too. The nigga that loves the that's in love with one of these servers, and all she does is just use him up. Need her need her shift covered. She calling, she calling Calvin. You know what I mean? She needs some extra money. I'm not feeling good, but I don't want to work. You think you can let me borrow? She calling Calvin. And Calvin suck ass is doing it. Like, and and he don't even have the heart to ask her out on a date, man. He a sucker. He a sucker, yeah, man. I, I wish I feel bad for Calvin. I'm which no. I do in a sense, but at the same time, because Calvin is like Calvin, Calvin needed kind of that OG mm -hmm. to pull him to the side. Yo. I worked with a Calvin, like you said, to your point. Mm -hmm. so I worked with a Calvin and seeing firsthand, like how everybody see how you get done, bro. Why, yeah. why you don't see? It? Now here's the here's the crazy part, and like I said, the sequel trash, but the sequel does have Calvin as a, as pretty much Monty in the next one, but it's still trash because it's not believable. I don't believe it. <laughs> see that now that alone, if you've seen this movie mm -hmm. and you're like me, haven't seen the sequel, that alone makes me want to watch the sequel because I got to see how that looks like. Yeah, go ahead. Still waiting. Trash. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> um, 
You know who else in that though? You know who else in who? The still waiting? Um, uh, damn. Oh, I can't remember her name, but she's in a uh, Friday at the Next. The 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 chick, uh, uh Money Mike's girl. Oh, Katie Albier. Yes, she she's in uh she's in Still Waiting. Okay then. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna check it out, man. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. that's an hour. Yeah. I ain't trying to spend too much time on it, but I'm gonna check it out. Go ahead. Um, I think it's like an hour and twenty. Okay. Well, lastly, did you have any trivia? I know you gave some throughout the, the film. I know the most interesting thing I found was the um, the director slash writer working in the industry and kind of coming up with the story. Like that. Yes. Here's the here's the trivia that I have. Uh, the the character who plays uh, what's his name, Mitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, his real name, I can't remember. Hold on, I wrote it down. I know you know. Who, Mitch's real name? Yes. Um, Mitch's real name is John Francis Daly. John Francis Daly, yeah. Okay, so John Francis Daly, he did not turn out to be a big actor, but he's a hell of a screenplay and screenwriter. He wrote uh, yeah, he Spider-Man is. Homecoming. He wrote uh, both of Horrible Bosses. And I think that's it. I think that's the other, the only thing that I wrote down. But yeah, he he's he's a hell of a screenplay writer, man. He's wrote a, a few movies that I fuck with. Like I said, Horrible Bosses, Spider Man Homecoming. So he didn't turn out to be a great actor, but he's a hell of a screenplay writer. So shout out to uh, shout out to him. But that's pretty much it on the trivia. No doubt, that's all I really found too. So I think you already said your rating system. I know you rate your films. Uh, hell yeah, shit yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. And this was a fuck yeah for you, right? Yes. All right, man. Well, cool. Another episode starting off 2024, right? Um, I don't know if you have any last words before I go ahead and send us out. Um, I just want to say, man, I appreciate you for even, you know, stepping on here with me, man. Because, uh, man, it would. I mean, I, I, I would have been good, but I needed you on this one, bro. Uh, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm going to figure this out, figure this whole system out, but I'm going to try to do the solo dolo, but man, I appreciate you. I appreciate, uh, the listeners. I appreciate another week in the books. Mo, Spike, we got y'all. Ray P was heading in. Um, <laughs> that's it. Culture Garden, Love of you. course. The Culture Garden, without question, baby. Yeah, man. Culture Garden, of course, man. And, uh, thanks for getting things started for the year for us. Um, yes, first sir. episode on the feed, um, Thank you for sharing some of your experiences. I'm, I'm, yes. I, I hope a lot of people hit you up about hey, more stories or, you share, can. or share their stories. I got um, stories for days. People. Yeah, or people who, uh, <laughs> it's like you say stories for days. I think about uh, when you talk about old girls like Biggie in the hypnotized video driving on the highway. <laughs> um, Man, you hear me? <laughs> that shit is crazy. But, uh, even if they don't ask you questions, hopefully they share their own stories, man, because I'm yeah. sure people have a ton of them if you worked in that line of, uh, mm -hmm. then you know exactly what we're talking about. But thanks for coming on here and, and being school, man, doing your thing. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to people listening to this and feedback. Culture Garden will be back um, on Thursday. We're going to have an interview. It was kind of a second part of our friends and family episode, which we're still riding a high from that. Um, man. So thank y'all. And then we'll, we'll be right back in the swing of things next week with uh, with another episode of Culture Garden. A little bit different than what y'all used to, but we're excited. It's going to be a great yeah. conversation and a great time. It's always it's always fun when we try new things. So, school, yes. shout out to you. Shout out to Ray P. Um, shout out to everybody out there listening, man. We love and appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Love uh, you, brother. No doubt, man. Let's go ahead and send them home, school. Peace.